I try to speak uh, to the people, for the people, and then uh, punch them around a little bit when they need it. Philadelphia could use a, a, a little smacking every now and again, right? <laughs> I'm looking forward to, to to drinking while doing this show. This is a club. I'm working. I get to drink on the job. I'm drinking and I'm doing my set. And I, I want to have fun with people. So that's work. Right now, put your hands together for Kevin Bowman. Yep. I agree. <laughs> I feel the same way you guys feel. It was great, man. Just, I just got my voice back. Like, I just started getting my voice back. So I'm glad. Just, it's like these last two weeks, I've just been yelling at these college kids for fucking up my brackets. <laughs> <laughs> Going in, 18 year old piece of shit, make your free throws. <laughs> A twenty-five dollar bracket trying to come up. <laughs> it's great, man. Life's good, man. I've been drinking a lot. I have, man. I think it's because I'm vaccinated. It's giving me an unhealthy confidence. I'm just doing things I shouldn't be doing. You doing cocaine now? I'm vaccinated, bruh. <laughs> Once I get these booster shots, I'm raw dogging these hookers. Let's go. <laughs> Who knew that that'd be such a trigger word, though? Telling people you got the vax? People get upset. Start calling you names. Oh, you vaccinated, huh? You sheep. Fucking sheep. <laughs> Follow you across the street. Man, man. You sheep. <laughs> like, dude, you're 47. Stop. <laughs> Do you even know what they're putting in your body? No. I have no idea what they're putting in my body. Here's a little fun fact. I never know what's been put in my body. I chase my McGrills with Taco Bell. You think I know what I'm putting in my body? Taco Bell don't even know what they're putting in your body. That's 35% ground beef right there, player. What's the other 65%? I don't know, man. What's all, all these follow-up questions? <laughs> Better get six of them, then. Get as close to 100% as I can. <laughs> People on social media, they still posting that they got COVID. Like, in their shop. I can't believe I got COVID. Still? <laughs> it's been here for a minute. <laughs> Listen, it's not in your face anymore. COVID's changing. It's lurking. It's patient. It's like a sexual predator just <laughs> hiding out in your bushes, jerking off, just oh. <laughs> Take your mask off. <laughs> Slower. <laughs> Shake those hands, you little anti-faxer. <laughs> this show is probably not gonna be for everyone. I just want you guys to know that. Uh, <laughs> Man, I'm tired of fighting people over this, man. If you don't want to get the vax, don't get the vax. I'm not fighting you. I'm supporting you. I believe there's too many people on this planet anyway. <laughs> you don't want that vax, man? You don't need that vax. Let's go to a rave. Start licking people. <laughs> Listen, man, I'm a positive person. Every time something bad happens, I'm like, we're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. We'll get through this. But then I just saw the Spirit Airline merge with Frontier Airline. I'm like, that's probably gonna be a problem. Like, <laughs> it's going too far. How do we allow this to happen? <laughs> Spirit merger with Frontier Airline? This is two C students getting together on a billion dollar project. <laughs> <laughs> Who's ever flown Frontier Airline and angrily said, you know, Spirit would never treat me like this? <laughs> Just because you can't do it does not mean you should do it. You think Chef Boyardee is trying to get together with Spam? We both come out of cans, man. Let's run this. 
between my salty ham and your vomity spaghettios, we take ramen noodles out the game. And the, I love Spirit Airlines. Everyone shits on Spirit, not me, I love it. Spirit Airlines is the only airline you can call the day before and be like, yo, how much it costs from Philadelphia to Las Vegas? And they're like, how much you got? I got $43.19. You know what? That's exactly how much that flight costs, too. You so crazy. How you know that? I can tell you this, sir. You can fly with us, but don't you think about bringing a suitcase with you. That's why when I fly Spirit, I wear all my outfits. I'm just 12 layers deep. Just a fat, sweaty piece of shit. Let's go, Spirit. Middle seat. Take this extra cash I'm saving by some nuts and screws. Tighten up this wobbly ass seat you got me in. <laughs> I'm back at it, grinding, working. Love working, man. I don't say no. Like, like when I don't want to do a show, I never say no to shows. Never. If I don't want to do a show, I just ask for way more money than I should get. <laughs> and if they make that money, then I want to do that show. Like I was recently asked to do like a, a, a church in like, like in southern Oklahoma, and it was like a Baptist church. They was like, man, we want you to come in and do God's work. I was like, well, God better have $15,000. <laughs> they was like, he does. I was like, I'm in. I said, i Praise Jesus. I was on stage like, look at God. <laughs> Just that's a Canada doing shows, Canadian shows. Brutal. They just paying me Canadian. No thanks. Seventy five cents to the dollar. What am I, a woman? <laughs> Fuck you guys. It's not like I made these rules. Sometimes it's not about money. It's just, you know, I was asked to do a nudist colony. It's like, it's gonna cost a lot, huh? Depends on what they look like. <laughs> Have you ever seen an attractive nudist colony? It's nothing worse. Standing butt naked on a beach and just having ugly naked people not laughing. <laughs> Every joke that fails, you can just see your balls shrinking. <laughs> I recently, though, I recently did the, uh, the whitest thing I've ever done in my life. And I've done some amazingly white shit. Like, uh, like I play Twister. I had macaroni and cheese with vegetables in it. <laughs> I went to a Kentucky Derby party dressed like a douchebag, like, why the fuck? Is everyone here looking like slave owners? What kind of Colonel Sanders party is this? <laughs> this was off the charts white though. I went, I went kayaking. I was in Key West, Florida, and my buddy's just like, Bozeman, you ever been kayaking? I was like, you know I haven't. <laughs> Here's something else you probably know. I don't know how to swim. <laughs> like, it's gonna be great, man. No worries. We're gonna have music. We're gonna have drinks. We're gonna get your own kayak. I was like, I feel like you're not utilizing the information that I just gave you. <laughs> and normally when I do really white shit, I just try to find one other black person. One other black person I can give a head nod to so we can let each other know some shit go down, we need to find each other. <laughs> just so, all right, we see each other, cool. There was no such person in Key West, Florida. I was desperate. I was like, I'll take a white dude with dreads. Give me somebody. <laughs> I was in Montana and saw a black dude. He was wearing cowboy boots and a 10 gallon hat, but he's still like, I see you, partner. <laughs> <laughs> this story gets wider. Uh, <laughs> we parked our kayaks, which I didn't know you could do. <laughs> and then all my white friends hopped into the water and just started peeing. And I was furious. I was like, I don't understand why I get killed first in every black movie 
and white people do the most murderable shit you can think of. <laughs> but then they was like, Bozeman, it's time to play Thunderstruck. <laughs> I was like, what? He's like, you know the song. I was like, yeah. He's like, here's the rules. When they say the word thunderstruck, you have to keep drinking till they say the word thunderstruck again. I was like, how many times did they say the word thunderstruck? It's a fucking lot. <laughs> but I caught the music solo, and I've never drank so many ruby red grapefruit white claws in my life. <laughs> I just saw my street cred floating down the water like, dog, we out. <laughs> Only reason I tell you this, because I hate when people are like, I don't see color, sorry. Sorry, no, no, you're race baiting, I don't see color. Please see the color of my skin. Because it lets you know that I grew up differently than you. And I grew up differently than you, and you invite me over to your house for the holidays, you know not to put broccoli in the fucking mac and cheese. Mm. If I come to your house and there's vegetables in the mac and cheese, I'm flipping over all your food. Just flip, flip, flip. You don't deserve a holiday. <laughs> I don't see color. You saw color and there was a black little mermaid, didn't you? You lost your shit. <laughs> it's scientifically impossible. No, no. You cannot have black fish in the sea. I said no, good sir. <laughs> I wasn't even upset, because that's exactly how I feel when I see a white running back in the NFL. I'm like, look at this fake ass shit. <laughs> These CGI running backs back here. <laughs> Christian McCaffrey ain't nothing but Wells Welker in the backfield. You're not fooling me, Roger. <laughs> my son, my son is mixed. Son is mixed. He identifies as black, not just black, like raging black. You should see his Snapchat guy kind. It's like a really dark dude. I had to have a conversation with him. I was like, hey man, when did you become an African refugee? He's like, I identify as black, dad. Then I show a video of him dancing to remind him that he's mixed. You see how you're missing the beats right there? That's because your mom's a redhead. Lighten up the photo. <laughs> My son is six foot seven and does not play basketball. Oh man. It's the most passive aggressive way of saying I don't love my father. <laughs> six foot seven athlete, you out here learning and shit. My heart's not in it, Dad. I don't give a fuck. That's not why I had you. Get out there and chase my dreams. He's, he's 20 years old. I don't know why that's not the age to run for president, because they know everything. You can't tell them shit. Every time I try to give him a piece of advice, he's always just, actually dead, actually. Actually dead. Always counterproductive for everything I say. Right up until it's time to ask me for money, then it's like, oh, wise one, please. Please bless me with your teachings. <laughs> so, <laughs> I have an 18 year old who refers to me as father like we're in a business relationship. <laughs> He'll walk past and be like, father? And I'll be like, least favorite child. <laughs> He's the worst, dude. Because he plays basketball, right? He plays basketball. It's just. When you have a kid that's like in like high school sports, don't you hate like your happiness is just tied into to their success? You be like, life is good, I'm working, my health is good. Why am I such a funk? I'm like, oh yeah, my punk ass kid only scored four points last night. <laughs> I have a 20 year old, an eight year old, and a four year old because my pullout game is trash. Trash, trash, trash. <laughs> if I was an IndyCar racer, my name would be Dick Trickle. You better believe. <laughs> you getting some extra squirts, you fucking around with me. <laughs> Having a four-year-old is great. Like, I like to write jokes, but I don't have to write jokes. I have a four-year-old. I can just tell you our day-to-day -day operations is hilarious. <laughs> Like I was recently giving him a bath. He's like, dad, 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 uh, my penis is standing straight up. 
I was like, I can see that, homeboy. He's like, can you fix it? <laughs> nah, I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> why, Dad, why can't you fix it? Because I want to see you again. <laughs> and you and I both know that you're a snitch. There's no way you're keeping that lifelong secret. <laughs> Plus I got a babysitter. The babysitter gives you baths. How's that gonna go down? Babysitter, my penis is broke, fix it. I'm not fixing your penis. My dad does it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Having kids is rough, man. Having a family is like running a small failing business. <laughs> You just see your assets. You're like, there's going to be no return on this. <laughs> Family's everything. I come from a big family. I'm the uh, youngest of 10, oldest of two. Yeah, that's a little joke about broken homes. <laughs> you guys are like, we got to do math problems in this bitch. When you're 10 deep, and poor, it's hard. Like, we didn't know we was poor because, you know, my father was a butcher, so we had a hook up on meats. Like, no sides, just meats. <laughs> Go in there, get yourself three pork chops, and if you're still hungry, make yourself a hot dog. <laughs> it's like, this don't feel balanced at all. <laughs> when you're poor, you don't know how to not do poor shit. Like my mother, like whenever I got good grades, she would take me to the horse track. Cause she thought because I was good in math that I could pick horses. <laughs> and then she would lose it when we lose. I thought she was good in math, what's going on? I was like, mama, I picked the number nine horse cause I'm nine, you psychopath. <laughs> they were happy though, man, I'ma tell you, man. The hardest hustle on the planet is marriage. It is a, it's a hard, hard hustle, it's just, it's just so unattainable. It's not realistic forever. No. Marriage should be like sports. It should be three-year contracts. <laughs> Once those contracts up, let's go to the negotiation table, see your stats. <laughs> three blowjobs in seven years. Ooh. <laughs> I think it's time for me to test this free agency market. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it should be. I'd be married six times if there was three year marriages. Just everything. We got, we, listen, we got divorced people here? Anybody? Yeah. Yeah. That's a clap of hope right there. <laughs> it's, just, it's just ridiculous, man. And they just do things. Like, I found this, I looked this up. There's a 45% divorce rate if you get married the first time. And then if you get married a second time, it's a 65% divorce rate. That's like taking a college exam and failing and begging for a retest and then getting a worse score. <laughs> and your professor's like, I don't think college is for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't like any of it. One of my favorite things to do though, like I, I, like I want people to be happy, but I, I do get a kick out of divorced people because it's, it's easy to spot them out, especially in a gym, right? You ever go to a gym and see a divorced person? Because they're working out harder than anyone. <laughs> they're working out the way they should have been working out when they were married. <laughs> no one works out harder than a divorced person, except for like that five foot five guy, you know that dude. <laughs> Oh, you know him, he's always angry, just mad because he can't reach shit. <laughs> always in your personal space, what you say, bro? What you say, bro? Relax, sir, I have zero inches of being punched in the thigh a bunch of times. People <laughs> are like, you just shit on marriage because you a player. I'm not a player, I got a CPAP. <laughs> Nothing humbles you like a CPAP. You know that little sleep apnea device? Just kills your sex drive. 
Why ain't you talking dirty to me? Because I'm fighting for my life over here, lady. <laughs> my days of being a pussy whisperer are over. <laughs> Got me looking like I'm on the set of Maverick with this mask on my face. <laughs> and you know I like to get freaky. The best I can do is unplug this hose and choke you out with it. <laughs> so you know what it's like to breathe when I don't have my CPAP. <laughs> And shout out to all the single people rocking the CPAP. That's mad confidence. <laughs> Showing up at somebody's doorstep with that prototype lunchbox around your shoulder. <laughs> I thought you were staying over. I told you I need to steal water. <laughs> that tap water messes with my lungs. You trying to kill me? I'm just doing God's work. <laughs> it's hard to be the chosen one. <laughs> There's one group of people that's killing it in marriage, I'll tell you. Without them, divorce rate would be at 90%. So if you see them, buy them a drink, shake their hand, because I'm talking about ugly people. <laughs> you guys kill me when you get weepy over a joke. <laughs> Ugly people are amazing in marriage. Just hear me out. Stop judging. <laughs> you ever see those Hollywood couples? They get divorced all the time. Holly Berry, arguably the finest woman ever, divorced four times. Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie, toast. Johnny Depp, Amber Heard, super toast. <laughs> and everybody's like, oh my God, why they get divorced? They have everything. That's why they got divorced. <laughs> The good looking people, they make millions of dollars and everyone wants to be like them. So when shit gets a little crazy, they bail because they have other options. <laughs> but ugly people don't have other options. <laughs> there are no fish in the sea for ugly people. <laughs> Just that one ugly ass barracuda that they snagged. <laughs> with that jagged ass tooth. <laughs> That's why you never see ugly people have big arguments, do you? Good looking people have them all the time. I dare you to say something to make me leave, you son of a bitch. <laughs> but ugly people are like, whoa, 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 now let's just take it easy. <laughs> We's all we got. <laughs> let's just finish our meatloaf and talk things over. <laughs> People love meatloaf. <laughs> they love it lots. If you had meatloaf twice in the last month, well. <laughs> I did that joke one time and a dude came up to me after the show. He's like, hey my man, hey my man, um, does meatballs count? <laughs> I don't even know what he's talking about. Like, what are you talking about? That whole ugly meatloaf shit. Does meatballs count or not? I was like, was there veal in it? He's like, nah. Then I was like, then yeah, it counts, man. You can't have a ground beef meatball and not be ugly. Work on your flavor profile. Listen, you guys are starting to figure out I'm not a good person. And I'm pretending to be. It's the best way to explain who I am as a person. It's the best way. Zach Wilson plays for the New York Jets and he is a quarterback and he is awful, God awful. Might be the worst quarterback in the league. Zach Wilson had a fiance who broke up with him because she caught Zach Wilson cheating with his mom's best friend. Zach Wilson is now my favorite player in the NFL. <laughs> Zach Wilson went to BYU, Mormon country. You go from BYU to New York City, somebody's mom's gonna get smashed. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> These next jokes are gonna be interesting, I'm just telling you. I feel the tension building. Are you guys familiar with uh, you know, be, like Mormons, they can't, they can't have sex. Premarital sex is like forbidden. But are you familiar with the term soaking? 
Some of you, a few of you. Soaking is what happens because you can't have premarital sex, but what you can do is uh, lay inside of a woman and just soak, if you will. <laughs> I'm not making this shit up. First time I heard about it, I was watching a basketball game a few years ago. I think it was like BYU versus Utah, and a player got suspended for having premarital sex. Then the suspension was lifted, and he got into the game, and then the whole stadium started chanting, let it soak, let it soak, let it soak. And I was like, uh, Google search. <laughs> But I had to know more. I had to know more. You can't have this thick ass detective mustache and not problem solve. <laughs> so, <laughs> I looked it up. Soaking is real. Sometimes when they're soaking, what will happen is their best friends will come over and jump on the bed. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just telling you that, so stop acting like you're a best friend. <laughs> I'm your best friend, I borrowed you $20. Yeah, would you jump on the bed so I can fuck? <laughs> I feel like I'm losing you guys. <laughs> I if I'm with a woman and she wants to soak, that's what I do. No sex, Kevin, but you're more than welcome to soak. Hot soak, but I'm gonna reach for a lot of shit. You look thirsty, how about now? You want some water? You want a remote? Can I get you anything? You... Don't make that face at me! If you're a drinker, you all have let it soak once or twice in your life. Everyone's had that drunken sex where you just run out of gas. But you don't pull out because you believe in yourself. I'm just going to knock this 20 minute power nap in and get back to it. You wake up in the morning, your dick's half hard, half prune because it's been marinating in puss for eight hours. Whenever that happens to me, I just treat my dick like a prize fighter. I just put a towel over and be like, I kept you in there too long, champ. <laughs> Should have threw in the towel a long time ago. You deserve a better fate. <laughs> All right. You guys did better on that joke than I thought you were gonna do, so. Let's level up. <laughs> What's that you say, Brittany Griner? Sure thing, Philadelphia. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, Brittany Griner plays for the WNBA and she went to Russia to play basketball and she got caught with some weed and uh, Russia gave her nine years of hard labor and the United States negotiated her release and uh, a lot of white people were angry. <laughs> like January 6th angry. <laughs> Like, who are you to tell me that my dog needs a leash angry? <laughs> I really don't have a joke about this. I just want you guys to know the energy just being put out there. I'm not saying, listen, you can feel one way or the other about Brittany Griner. I'm not telling you she didn't have an opinion, but you guys have such strong opinions about it. It's ruining your day. Everyone acting like they study hostage negotiations in high school. <laughs> you know, you know, I majored in Russian law in hostage negotiations, right? I just decided the Trader Joe's was the route for me. <laughs> is little dick energy. That's all that is. Little dick energy. Stop having little dick energy. You need to have big dick energy. Big dick energy is real. And you don't even have to have a big dick. You just need to have the energy of a big dick person. You gotta see Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon has a horse cock. It's true, I'm not lying, that Nick Cannon. And everybody was shocked. I can't believe Nick Cannon's dick is that big. What are you talking about? Dude's got 14 kids, seven jobs. 
He was married to Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey got divorced with him and she got remarried and then he went to the wedding. That's big dick energy. <laughs> Some of you motherfuckers can't even move out when she break up with you. I, I can change. <laughs> you know, I got to get my money right before I move out. <laughs> That's what it, like, as soon as I heard that Nick Cannon had a big dick, I was like, I got to see, I got to see. <laughs> and all my homophobe friends like, why well, you want to look at another dude's dick? You gay? No, I'm not gay. I don't even eat candy that squirts in my mouth. <laughs> You get the joke. Listen. <laughs> Whenever I hear someone has a big dick, I must see just to make sure that I belong. <laughs> I just want to know that I'm still in the club. I'm not winning. I'm not losing. And I'm good with that. It's crazy, though, how like men's happiness is can be attached to the size of their penis. Cause I ran into an old girlfriend once, like a, and we went to go out like a long time ago. Like we hadn't even seen each other in eons. And then she's like, Kevin, I got a boyfriend that's going good. And guess what? He got a bigger dick than you do. <laughs> and I know she said that just to hurt me. And it worked cause I was crushed. <laughs> I was like, who is this half man, half horse? <laughs> Minotaur ravaging your puss. <laughs> so some of you came here because you saw that I did clean comedy once. I just doing <laughs> When you do God's work, you gotta balance the scales. <laughs> little dick energy is what driving politics. It's little dick energy and we letting it bother us. If we know, if we just know that like people don't, like they don't actually care for us. Like I remember back in the day when people didn't talk politics and life was good. But now people are sharing. It's just that little dick energy, everything. You got an opinion about everything. And I, and I don't like it, the fact that people don't, like I'm a liberal, but I, I fucking hate my team. <laughs> right? I'm like, oh my God, this is my squad. We about to get the shit beat out of us. Oh, oh, so you down with Biden? Biden is just a return to normal awful. <laughs> I was like, like bothered, like he got booed at the State of the Union. I wish he would have just snapped, took his diaper off and just start chucking shit at everybody. <laughs> the fucks! <laughs> got unemployment down to 3%, COVID out of control, y'all booing me? Blah, blah. I didn't even want to be here. I planned on dying a year ago. <laughs> Little dick energy. Just hold your own party accountable. That's all I ask. <laughs> I don't know. When people get mad. Because you, you, you. I, I live in a decent, like a decent suburb. And they, and they be like, oh, you, you hanging out with Republicans and stuff. What's up with you, man? I said, man, I got a lot of Republican friends that I disagree with politically. Everything across the board. But if I was in a pinch, they'd be like, where you at, man? I'm coming to get you. <laughs> You need me to bring my gun? Because I, I don't even know if they want to help me. They just might want to shoot shit. Just <laughs> If you need my gun, man, just let me know. And I have a lot of Democratic friends that agree with me every way, step it away politically. Everything we align. But if I was in the pinch, they're like, sorry, I got, my daughter's got soccer practice. I can't help you. <laughs> a friend's a friend. And I argue with my Republican friends all the time. They've, oh, Trump was our best candidate, Bozeman. Why didn't you vote for him? Here's my rule of thumb when it comes to voting. Uh, if the Klan supports you, I generally go the other way. <laughs> That's just how I vote. Call me old fashioned. <laughs> There's racist Democrats too. Of course there are, but it's rare. Finding a racist Democrat is like finding a fat white girl with an all white baby. <laughs> Some of you aren't even laughing. I think he's talking about Susan and Jamal. Well, 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 Philadelphia. It's like these cobbled streets are bringing you together.
here's my last thing about politics, because I can feel your butt cheeks squinching on the seats. <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you to hate your party as much as you hate the other party, maybe a little less, because they do divisive shit. Think about all the things that they come up with to divide us. Just the slogans, defund the police, so dumb. Take back our country, really? We got our first black president, and now you win. we need to take it back? <laughs> I'm gonna tell you my least favorite, my least favorite term is uh, white privilege. I don't like it, and I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but I'm just telling you, it's dismissive, because there's a lot of poor ass white people that don't understand living in their mom's basement, finger banging their cousin. <laughs> Like, fuck you mean white privilege, Kevin? Huh? Huh? This smell like white privilege to you? That joke might have been too much, but you get my point. They should call it what it really is. It shouldn't be called white privilege. I moved to start calling it what it really is. Shit niggas can't do. It is. Everything is white privilege. Bozeman, I got pulled over by the cops and I gave him a piece of my mind. You know what I'm saying. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was a golf course, man. Just membership only. They let me get in around. Isn't that great, Bozeman? I'm sure it is. <laughs> Listen, people, I wish I didn't care about politics. I wish I didn't care. I wish I was like one of those Comic Con people. You know those Comic-Con people. All they do is attend comic conventions. They don't care about anything except for wizardry and costumes. <laughs> I was in Grand Rapids, Michigan at a Starbucks and I saw like a Comic-Con convention and I was just like, their costumes were amazing and I was just hard staring and one dude caught me staring at his costume. He just looked at me, he's like, you don't know nothing about me, bro. <laughs> I was like, well, no, you've never seen a vagina before. I got a pretty good idea you're still a virgin, Peter Parker. In this Starbucks, though, they had a, a tip jar, which irritates me. But it wasn't just like the tip, like it was like $20 bills in. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Why is there $20 bills in a Starbucks tip jar? It's like, is this a Starbucks with happy endings? Is this? the Starbucks that I've always dreamed of. <laughs> yeah, I'll have a coffee with cream. No, not that cream. <laughs> Listen, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's a rumor going around that black people are poor tippers. <laughs> I like the tip, because I know that's the game, but I don't like the tip like Starbucks, Jimmy John's, like these are Fortune 500 companies. Pay them, I should not have to pay their salary. There are times, there are times when I really tip and I don't have to. And I'm only gonna tell you this story because you're my friends. <laughs> One time, I was at an airport in Charlotte and I had to take an airport shit. <laughs> Everyone knows that airport shits are non-negotiable. <laughs> it's like you got two minutes to make a decision because I'm coming. <laughs> Nobody's ever like, I'll just wait till I get to the airport and take a shit. <laughs> I can't wait to be in eight other stalls with other dudes and they all sound like 80s beatboxers with their assholes. <laughs> That's a pretty good visual. I get there and there was a guy masked up, had like a fucking spray bottle, gloves, cleaned the toilet off for me. He's like, there you go, my man. I was like, thank God, because my squat game ain't what it used to be. <laughs> Here's $10 for you, I will give you another 10, but I heard about the Starbucks I gotta go to real quick. <laughs> another time I took, well, my son got my car stolen at the airport. Yeah, here's, here's a little fun fact. If your kid ever tried to do something nice for you, don't let him. <laughs> Especially if it's unsolicited, because it's gonna end in fuckery. 
My son could not pick me up at the airport, so he dropped my car off at O'Hare Airport in Chicago, one of the busiest airports on the planet. Just dropped it off, and of course, they targeted him, because I raised him in the suburbs, and he has no street sense whatsoever. <laughs> I didn't know my car was stolen because he gave the worst directions ever at O'Hare Airport, like daily parking. It's like, look, Dad, you're going to get to a stop sign. You're going to take a right. You're going to get to another stop sign. Take a left. Go through a stop sign. Keep driving. And it's going to be somewhere around there. <laughs> I was like, I need more information, man. Take a picture. He's like, can't. I already left. So I was walking around for like 45 minutes, then security sees me. Security sees me and they're like, hey man, it's clear you lost your car. Hop on in, buddy. This guy lost his car too. We'll find your cars together. <laughs> and I hop in with this dude and this dude is like, we're two real dum-dums, huh? <laughs> no, you're a dum-dum, my son's a dum-dum, and I'm fucking irritated. <laughs> We found his car first because it was there. <laughs> After 45 minutes, we deduced my car was stolen. So I broke that dude off with a 20, like $25, like whatever I had. I was like, man, thank you. I appreciate it. That's a solid tip, all things considered, because I had no cash on me and it was my last 25 and I definitely didn't have a car. <laughs> They found my car three days later. Now normally when bad shit like that happens, I always just try to, I don't know if you guys do this, just try to talk yourself up, remember the good things that are going on in your life. I got my health, I, I love my family, it's just a car. <laughs> then they found my car, it was trash, I was like, it's fine. But then they stole the iPhone charger and I lost it. <laughs> like, what kind of bullshit is this? And they replaced it with a Samsung charger? I'm like, what a poor person move, who would do that? Why would you leave a Samsung charger? If you text me and it shows up green, I'm blocking you. I don't. <laughs> I felt violated, people. I had my car stolen. I had to drive around in a stolen car. They just trashed it for like three weeks every time. Every time I, bless you. It just, that's a, Pretty wet cough, man. <laughs> Let's I wish you well. <laughs> Every time I was in my car, right? For three weeks, I had to take a shower because I just felt dirty, just dirty, just violated. Listen, people, I would never, never compare getting your car stolen with sexual assault, but you guys got to hear me out on this. <laughs> Listen, by no stretch of imagination, when women get sexually assaulted or me too, it's awful. Men are scum of the earth. But when it happens to men, not, not as bad, right? Because I'm, I'm telling you this story because you're my friends. <laughs> One time I was in a bar, right? And this woman walks past me and she hard grabs my dick, like hard grabs it. And that's definitely like a me too moment. But I wasn't mad at all. Instead, I called my friends. I was like, y'all gotta get to the club. Bitches down here grabbing dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put my skinny jeans on, man. Now this woman was, she was highly unattractive. <laughs> she was missing several teeth. <laughs> and not the good kind either, not like the, guess who could take a punch and keep a secret? <laughs> this was way more crystal methy. <laughs> a mass mandate would have did her a solid. This is what I've learned too. When women hit on you sexually and you turn them down, it's not gonna go well for you. 
They don't be like, oh, sorry, no disrespect, have a good day. She was making a scene, just, oh, girl, he gay, he don't want none of this, he gay. I told you he was gay. In a packed bar, just screaming it out, he gay, 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 gay. And like after 10 minutes, I just snapped. I was just like, I bet you you're horrible in bed. And she's like, oh, bitch, I got some good pussy. But she didn't sound like that at all because she was missing her two front teeth. <laughs> it was all like, oh, bitch. I got some good sussy. I got some good sussy. I was like, no, it's not. I bet you it's trash. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. I spit in your face. You've been spitting in my face the whole time. You have no offensive lineman. Your spit is coming unimpeded to the quarterback. It's a weird joke to end my set on. <laughs> that cover all the topics? Is there anything that you guys want me to talk about? You ain't get to? Let's play the game live. I'll just pop it out there. What's, what's the topic? Bulls. Chicago Bulls? I could see you being from Philadelphia why you would be so concerned about a Chicago Bulls shit. <laughs> If I'm being honest, I think you're just being a shit person right now, because <laughs> Philadelphia's killing it at every sport, and you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Why don't you talk about your team? <laughs> Jesus Christ, lady. I didn't know it was Hurtful Saturday. <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow? Gwyneth Paltrow? I mean... She kind of blows my white privilege story out of the water. <laughs> I don't. All the shit she was talking about, I was just like, yeah, I mean, cool. Yeah, you, you, you ski. Like, I'm sure you got membership. And she was pissed. Like, that was the whitest thing anyone ever said. Well, what did you think when that accident happened? Well, that was a half a day of skiing ruined. <laughs> I have to go home and pull my cauliflower out the mac and cheese and have a good old meal. <laughs> All right, a couple more. Trump? Trump? Uh, oh. <laughs> Listen, man. Anybody that tans that much you know that there's a bit of fakeness to them. Like, I, I like everyone, black, white, Mexicans, Asians, but like if a white girl, if I'm fucking around with a white girl, I want her like pasty, white, like, I want her name to be Elmer Glue, I want. <laughs> if I see somebody orange, I'm just like, dude, no, no. It's like seeing a fucking black dude with new balances. I'm like, something not right. Something not right. What do you really think of Philadelphia? What do I really think of Philadelphia? I love Philadelphia. You got it's diverse. Look at this crowd. I think you guys streets need a little work. We gonna keep these streets in the spirit of 1776. Pretty good one. I just thought of that. That's good. That's good. Ah, that's good. <laughs> I hope that that's how you sound when you come. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sex. Mmm. Mmm. Listen, sex isn't everything, but it's a lot of things. It can make up for a lot of relationship mistakes. Let's say you met the perfect person, great job, attracted to them, safe and secure with them, long conversations with them, but they're awful in bed. Do you stay with them? Of course not. I met a girl who possessed none of those qualities, but she was amazing in bed. I was like, I think we can make it. 
I feel good about this relationship. It feels right. <laughs> I heard she's a crackhead. Mind your business. <laughs> anyway, key support live comedy. Amazing time. Thank you guys for coming out. Thank you. Thank you. I love Philadelphia. I love the energy. I love that they're so sports centric because it's all positive vibes now because all their teams are killing it. So it's a perfect time to do comedy. You don't want to do comedy when things aren't in Philadelphia when when their teams are bad. No, <laughs> stay away. Listen, baby steps though, baby steps. You guys are knocking on the door with every team. Just baby, just baby steps. Be happy because I'm Chicago, so. I'm in a different, I would love to be in you guys' situation. This club is built with comedy in mind. Sometimes people have comedy clubs and they take over older buildings that wasn't built for comedy and they put comedy in there. This place has a feel of like, yo, comedy is supposed to be towed here. Nothing else is supposed to go down except for comedy, which is what a comic wants. We want the seats right on top of us. We want an intimate setting. And then we want us to, to, to be able to, to work our craft with limited interruptions in this spot. And just, just like, even like outside, it's just like the, the block is so narrow. It's almost like they're just crunching people and like just forcing you to come to this comedy club. So it's super dope. It's, it's a great club. It's a great club. It's going to be called God's Work. A buddy of mine was just like, we was brainstorming. He's like, you should name it God's Work. And then I was just like, all right, well, I'll just, I'll just tag it a couple of tag God's work in a couple of jokes and then make it make it fluid, you know? If I can remember to throw a couple of tags in, it'll be God's work. But that's the work and title. That may not be it when it's all said and done. It might just be called trash. <laughs> Shit show. Who knows, dude? Who knows? That's the beauty of a live show that's about to be recorded and put out to the internet forever and ever. Wasn't that fantastic, folks? If you want to see more of that great content, stay tuned to Helium Comedy Studios' YouTube channel. <laughs> i got to go take a shower. <laughs>